Welcome into Bengals Breakdown. I am Tom Downey. Before we get into today's show, a critically important question. Which chili company is better, Skyline or Gold Star? I will answer at the end of today's show, plus a little surprise on top of that, so make sure you watch the end of it. S for Skyline, G for Gold Star. There is a correct answer, so go vote in the comments. Welcome to Bengals Breakdown by Chat Sports. I am Tom Downey. Let's get into the latest on the Bengals. Some breakouts, some standouts, and Joe Burrow. Contract talk once again from ESPN. The Bengals and Burrow so far have been very quiet publicly and even privately in terms of potential leaks to different media members about the contract talks. ESPN thinks Justin Herbert can end up getting his massive extension done first. We'll break down what Jeremy Fowler had to say. As we've said before, I have not changed my tune on this, nor will I. I am very confident a deal done gets done, or deal does get done. Excuse me. The Bengals want to pay Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow wants to be in tonight, despite what some of those, you know, pro football talk at the beginning of a draft status. Oh, Burrow should demand a trade. Wrong. He has done great in Cincinnati. Here's what Jeremy Fowler of ESPN thought. An emphasis on these first three words. Talking to other teams, so not sourced in the Bengals organization, they think Burrow could wait on Herbert in L.A. If Herbert can get a deal done first, Burrow can just say, okay, well, that's the benchmark. Give me a little bit more than that, and then we'll all be happy. I do think this makes some sense. And frankly, it even makes it easier, quote-unquote, on both sides. The Bengals and Burrow don't have to do all of the legwork of figuring out the exact average per year, the guaranteed money. They can just let Herbert and the Chargers handle that and then pay him a little bit more. After all, Joe Burrow is better than Justin Herbert. I, look, Herbert's a fantastic player, don't get me wrong. I do think it's a little curious to say he's an anointed one when shouldn't we be memeing him for losing against the Jags and blowing that playoff? We just, just mentioning that as a reality there. But I think... Burrow, if he signs after Herbert, will get a little bit more. I wouldn't mind getting it done before that because, hey, that means maybe Herbert can get a little bit more and ends up being a steal quickly, but he's probably asking for a little bit too much for Cincinnati. So who ends up getting paid first? Both these deals should be done this offseason. This is today's pinned comment. It is B for Joe Burrow or H for Justin Herbert. If an ad happens to play here on YouTube, that's fine. Ignore the ad. Head down there and go vote. B for Burrow, H for Herbert. In the end, it doesn't matter that much who gets paid first. Because even if Burrow signs after Herbert and ends up being the highest paid guy, we're probably talking a difference of maybe a million dollars per year. Maybe even just a half million bucks per year. And you can structure that to where the actual hit doesn't even apply to the Burrow versus Herbert contract for like four years if you really needed to. Both these players will command over $50 million per year. Frankly, I'm curious how much closer it gets to $55 million. Or maybe, and I, I am down with this, I would love to see a Mahomes-style deal where it ends up being like a 10-year, $55 or $60 million deal. I'm not worried about that because in three or four years, the quarterback market will have caught up to that figure anyway, and you're still getting a pretty big discount there. So, Joe Burrow, for me, is the second-best quarterback in the NFL. Sorry, Josh Allen. Sorry, Herbert. Sorry, Lamar. And well, I don't think anyone else has a, chance, a claim beyond those top couple guys, and Lamar's a maybe there. So you get it done. And I would love for this deal to be done before training camp. Get it out of the way. Take care of it. And it's not an, a potential distraction. I don't think it's a distraction, but it's not a potential one. It's cleared away, and you can focus in on getting deals done for guys like T. Higgins, like a Logan Wilson, et cetera. Speaking of deals, we have one for you from our friends over at Fanatics. This Bengals 4th of July themed t-shirt, USA themed t-shirt, is t-shirt is available at chatsports.com slash Bengals USA. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. So go get your Bengals gear to rock this 4th of July. Chatsports.com slash Bengals USA. Let's talk surprise standouts now for the Bengals. E um, ESPN went through and named one surprise standout from minicamp OTAs this year for each NFL team. 
Their selection was Sidney Jones. And I'll give them credit for picking an actual surprise standout, not, you know, one of the reporters picked, like, it was the Titans they picked Traylon Burke. It's not a surprise, right? Sidney Jones, though, was a surprise standout since he had been cut last year by the Seattle Seahawks. The Raiders ended up picking him up, and now he's on the roster trying to contribute and make the team this year, which, if he does is probably a good testament to his growth for the former second-round pick who was going to be a first-rounder, has never quite recovered from that, a torn Achilles and the impact it did early on in his career. Here's what Ben Baby of ESPN wrote about Sidney Jones. He said, Jones finished the team's offseason workouts with a nice minicam showing. Most notably, he was in a spot at their 50 pass tender for wideout Higgins during a 7-on-7 seven -seven period. It's a great sign for the Bengals secondary that signed Jones for veteran depth. Sidney Jones did not play very much last year with the Seahawks or with the Las Vegas Raiders. Was targeted 14 times in coverage. He's become a journeyman over the course of his NFL career, which, you know what, it happens. It, it's the reality for a former second rounder. And the Bengals aren't asking him to be their best corner. They're asking him to maybe, you know, corner four, maybe corner five or six there. And if he can be a solid one, that sets up very well for the Bengals' depth in the secondary. Although I will say... I am not convinced he is a roster lock. We'll break down why here in a second, but I want to hear your predictions first, folks. Does Sidney Jones make the Bengals roster in 2023? Why for yes and for no? You guys can go vote for me in the comment section. I mentioned he's not a lock. Well, Awuzie, Cam Taylor-Britt, Mike Hilton, DJ Turner are roster locks. There is four. Most teams will carry anywhere from five on the low end to a maximum of seven. Six might be more of a sweet spot for this Bengals team. And Alan George has drawn great praise from Cincinnati. He got to work with the ones with Ouzier banged up. And DJ Ivy has his fans in the organization as well as a seventh round pick. So Sidney Jones still has to earn that roster spot this year. And we'll know more about that as training camp gets going. That'll be going in about a month. Uh, a little bit under it, I suppose, at this stage right now. And we will have Bengals training camp coverage for you. So make sure you are subscribed. YouTube.com slash Bengals TV. Free videos every single day when you guys are subscribed. Let's go to a breakout candidate, Daxton Hill. USA Today went through each team's top breakout candidate. I think a good selection here of Dax Hill. The 2022 first-round pick played in... 15 games in his first season with the Bengals, but did not make much of an impact. He was kind of stuck behind Jesse Bates and Von Bell, both of whom are gone. And now it is Daxton Hill being counted on to be a significant impact player for this Bengals team in 2023 as they replace and shuffle that back-end safety secondary room. I like Daxton Hill a lot coming out of Michigan. I thought he was primed for a significant season uh, this year, we'll, and I agree with you at USA Today Selection here. I think it's the obvious choice, right? So name a player who you think ends up breaking out this season. Daxton Hill can be that answer. Maybe it's somebody else that you have in mind that could also stand out as a breakout this year. Go vote with that player name for me in the comments section. My one pick, especially on defense... It is Dax Hill. I, I am convinced he's going to have a massive season. Like I mentioned, I loved him out of Michigan. He was a really good football player. You spent a first-round pick. You gave him time to adjust to the NFL. Didn't ask him to do much. This year, my expectations are. Do I think he's going to be an instant top 10 state like the way Jesse Bates was? No, it's probably asking for just a little bit too much. But I do think the impact is going to be drastically better than the not very strong one that the Bengals had last season. He didn't really do much uh, in 2022, and that's okay. Now is his time to shine. There's Jordan Battle. There's Tyson Anderson. There's Nick Scott, the free agent acquisition. But I am absolutely convinced that this year is the year for Dax Hill to take that significant step forward and have a large breakout campaign in 2023. All right, back now to the question we asked at the beginning of the show. Which, which one is better, Skyline Chili or Gold Star Chili? The Bengals are now on board with this as well. The correct answer is Skyline. There is no argument in favor of Gold Star. Skyline is absolutely the better cheese coney. So cheers to you guys, and I'll see you later.